Welcome to a Let's Get On With It short. This is Betrayal at Crondor, requested by Liam O'Connor as part of the Rewarding the Rewarders opportunity I offered last year. This is a first-person RPG developed by Dynamics, a Sierra Online subsidiary. They're responsible for Red Baron, um, The Adventures of Willie Beamish, I think. Um, I primarily know them through Star Siege Tribes. Um, this game was released on DOS in, as you can see at the bottom, 1993 there. Per the request, I'll play the game for at least an hour, and I'll see how long I want to play the game afterwards. Likely won't be much longer than an hour. If you want to see someone play more of this game, I do have a recommendation, whom I will put in the video description, Effing Controller. I still don't think he's done with this game. I watch him from time to time. I think he started a series, I guess, like back in late 2012. And he gets around to it every now and then. Uh, this... This game takes place primarily in uh, the fantasy world created by Raymond Feist. Um, I have little familiarity with it, uh, with this entire game in general. I have read the reference card, I do have it open to the right of my screen right now, and I did skim over the manual. I didn't want to spend too much time on account of me only going to be playing this game for an hour. Uh, you can purchase this game off of GOG.com, G-O-G, if you're interested. A formerly good old games. Um, yeah, I'll let the rest of the credits roll. Volume level should be alright. Uh, the music's pretty powerful here in this intro. I've, uh... I haven't played any of this game. Haven't seen any of it played. I've gone a little bit past the main menu screen in a prior recording, only to discover that uh, this windowed mode wanted to... the game itself changes resolutions. We're going to work around that, folks. A lot of text in this game, based on, you know, the fact that it was, uh, based off a, uh, a novelist fantasy world. Okay, preferences. I have no reason to want to change those right now. Contents. Shows us a list of chapters. What have you. Let's go ahead and click on... Start New Game Chapter 1 Into a Dark Night Uh-huh, and that's where it happened there. We go ahead and, uh, position... There we go. It, you'll have to make it for the time being. Blood-soaked rags collected at the boy's feet. One by one, he tended the wincing soldier's purple wounds, stitched, salved, bandaged, did what little he could in the leaping golden halo of firelight. Fortunately for his roadside patient, he could do more than most. Fingers slick with alum ointment, he worked fervently to tie off a catfoot cord, then brushed the injury with a light touch that to the untrained eye would seem only a friendly pat. Others would recognize the telltale hand gesture as a magical ward against infection. Done, Owen sighed, wiping his hand in a rust-colored cloth. No guarantees, though. The stitch may hold all the way to Lamut, and then again, push too hard and you could be bleeding like a stuck pig on Midsummer's. You did fine, Sig... Hmm. Signor Locklear replied, smiling approval before rolling down his sleeve. It'll scar, but it's good for a noble's reputation. Let's the kingdom folk know he isn't resting on his laurels, and it impresses the ladies. I'll be sure to look you up in Tiburn if I ever need stitching up again. The boy accepted the compliment with a humble nod while he packaged away the rest of his medical supplies. His thoughts focused instead on the third man who slumped in the shadows across from them. Despite the manacles that bound the stranger's hands and the distance that separated them, the boy felt dreadfully exposed. His avenues of escape limited should Locklear's elven-looking prisoner decide to liberate himself. What did he do? Owen whispered, jerking his head towards the man. Goroth, let's just say that he had the disadvantage of being at the wrong place at the wrong time, Locklear said cautiously. He snatched a greenish apple out of his knapsack, offering one to Owen. I have to take him to Crondor. Did he kill someone? Owen asked. No. He attacked you. The Signor... I don't know how to pronounce that. Signor? Signor? Hmm. Wiped apple juice from his mouth, shook his head. No, no, not exactly. Well, who cut you up then? Before Locklear could reply. Now it's time for me to... To 
change the little positioning again. Go ahead and reset size, move the window a little bit, and we're good. As good as we're gonna get. Goroff leapt forward, his chains writhing between his wrists like metallic vipers. Get out from underfoot, Owen! Assassin in the camp! Do not struggle so, Haseth. I wish to keep you alive. But be glad I do not. The goddess of death will show you greater mercy. Alright. So, here we are. This is a first-person role-playing game, and we have ourselves a screen here. Let's go ahead and take a look at ourselves. We have a weapon here. That's the durability value, I think. Those are rations. Can I right-click? There we go. Oops. Did I eat them already? I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Let me uh, quickly drag over the reference card. No, that's the use button. I don't want to click that. Okay. Lane the Brown. I don't feel like reading all this text in the world. We have uh, many, many things to do here. Right-clicking on items can give you more information. Oh, it gives me a lot of descriptive flavor text. Yes. So this is a broadsword. Gives you some uh, information about that. The higher durability item maybe gauges its effectiveness. Uh, as you can see, our armor isn't exactly in the best condition here. Standard kingdom armor. But it is repairable. This is Owen. That's Locklear. This is Owen. He is the magician of the party. Uh, he's got rations of his own. That's our herbal pack. Which can apparently increase the rate which people are healed. And two torches. And uh, Gareth here. Who, uh, was who was apparently bound in chains. So at least he is for the time being, I guess. Uh has some standard equipment of his own. I guess we didn't take the weapon away from him. How about that? Left-clicking on this button will display any available items. Dragging an item to the button will drop it. We have a key? A peasant's key. Okay. A peasant's keys, I think, um, are like sort of like skeleton key type things. But I've been known to be wrong from time to time. Okay, and here's a, um, a stat screen of sorts. We have Locklear here, who uh, we can tell to focus on a variety of different things. Which uh, sets focus on emphasis and de-emphasis. I don't know how many skills we can emphasize at once. I guess we can emphasize all of them, but that kind of seems silly in the prospect of things. And I have a fair understanding of what each skill does on account of uh, skimming over the manual. Uh, I don't think I need to worry too much about this shit for the time being, but uh, Locklear seems more of a possible range combatant. The red bars. Uh, gauge. Uh, how much you actually have. Oh, in there. Oh, I can slip between them like that. Ooh. Lots of text. There's Goroth there. Goroth is uh, a dark elf. Uh, less skin colored and more just terminology. Meldahorn, or I don't remember the actual term for him. And he's not quite that fast, but he is incredibly strong. And he's definitely going to be the melee combatant, more so of the three. Uh, I might also have him focus on... Uh, Scout and Stealth. He, him here, uh, I might have him do, like, uh, some range combat shit. I also want him to do uh, armor and weapon craft. Who's the... He's also the best lockpick guy of us. You are. You are the best bard. I don't really... The bard? No. Barding is dumb. <laughs> And defense, I guess? Eh. Oh, whatever. Each person can have four. Four four dots. And 
Eh, we won't focus so much about the ranged. I don't have anyone doing uh, lockpick. That's right. Uh, we'll take your dot off of defense. We don't have anyone doing assessment. Ah, oh, whatever. I'm done. We also have spells here that we can look at. Despair thy eyes. Oh. Hmm. How do I look at those? That is not how you look at them. Okay. Not important. So there we go. O brings up my options screen where I can save. Let's go ahead and make a save in LGWI. Not LP. You think I am someone else? Use my arrow keys to move around. I can also use this. This is, the, I think that's the cast a spell button. It is. And I don't, that's the, that would be a follow road automatically button. That's the encampment button. This displays the overhead map. And that displays the big people map. Okay. And B can be used to save the game. So let's go ahead and take a look around here. Interact. Goroth, check the corpse. No sense being squeamish, he said, rifling through a rucksack which lay next to the body. Supplies are supplies wherever you find them. This fellow won't be needing them anymore. Okay, so I think those are lockpicks. They are. Okay. Go ahead and give all and share with the party. Makes it. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look around. This ge oh god, I move very fast. Several pieces of charred wood in a circle, of small stones were all that remained of the small campfire. So maybe I don't want to hold down the button. Looks like someone lost a box. Might be worth investigating. Locklear gritted his teeth while they had agreed the box should be open. He was privately concerned the previous user might have left behind an unpleasant surprise. This are silver royals. Woo! So yes, currency, royals, sovereigns, gold, silver. Take it. And I imagine this game, you know, it's pretty... I, oh, there we go. Goros seemed distant. Though the more to hell, more at hell, warrior didn't appear grieved about killing the assassin that had followed them from the Northlands. His eyes had a baleful look in them that seemed something between hatred and rage. Several times he glanced back at the corpse that lay behind them in the dust, his thoughts unguessable from his expression. Do you wish to bury him? We could do that. It is not our way. I simply am somewhat disturbed that he would come after me. He was... a kinsman. There are other things that trouble me as well. Delicon's assistants are slow, but not altogether stupid. Another like Asaph and you only have my corpse to drag before your Prince Arutha. Sorry you don't get off that easy. As long as you are under my command, you are forbidden to die, Mord Hell. I have gone too far too much gone to far too much trouble to keeping you alive to bury you now. It's time we took that we took the chains off of you. It'd be far easier for you to defend yourself if your hands are free to swing a sword again. You're not just gonna set him free, are you? I might have to give him a voice like a uh, fantasy might have to give these people voices. You're not just gonna set him free, are you? I thought you said he was your prisoner. Uh, that's gonna take too much effort. Whatever. He is my prisoner, Owen. The circumstances are f terribly complicated. Even if he chose to sneak off, he'd be lucky to make it to the next town alive. This is the third such assassin we've run into since we left the Northlands, and I have a feeling that more will be waiting for us. He'll be much safer with me and I with him. As the boy would be, if he were to, if he were to whisper the wrong word in the wrong year, he could easily be the death of us. Me? Who am I going to talk to? I'm not even heading in the same direction. It wouldn't be a matter of who you talk to, Owen. There'll be ears listening for word of a mourned hell traveling with a noble. Damnation, I should have thought about this when you entered the capital. The time being, you're my squire. Once we arrive safely in the palace, you'll be free to go your own way. But I have pressing business in Tibur. This is not a subject of debate. We must get to Krondor. My mission is of critical importance, and I don't have time to improvise an easy solution. The possible option would be to slit your throat and leave you die. I have absolutely no desire to do that. Now let's get moving before Delicon's assassins catch our scent again. They'll likely come looking when Hasset doesn't return from his mission. Alright, so we've left our camp. 
Let's go ahead and display the map here. And big people map? Where am I? I'm currently here. There's Yabon. Let's actually go ahead and... Uh, I think Krondor is uh, to the south. Let's take a look around. Let's explore. Right? Thinking only made it worse. Setting aside his reservations about pilfering the Fallen, he decided he would take what the Goddess of Luck had given them. However moral he might feel about it, he was certainly hit, certain his stomach would quickly assuage his guilt if he found a bit of food to eat. But we found nothing. I don't know whether loot in this game is like a combination of random and preset things, or what. Okay, here we go. Here's the lock on the road. And once you click that, you will not go off the road no matter what. However, you know, when you get to a fork, the game, I think, will be like, which way you want to go? And you'll be like, lol, I don't know. I just tried to use my mouse wheel to zoom out. I don't think that's happening. Right. It's going to be hard for me to steer myself like that. But let's go, let's go around and, you know, take a peek. Explore here. How about? It's a body. We might want to look it over. All right. I probably already checked out that body. I get a feeling I went in the wrong direction here. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be one of these games where I don't know how to steer myself. I'm already excited. Now, encounters aren't thought on this map. Uh, they're like a, uh, they have their own little separate map, so it's not exactly like, say, one of the later Might and Magic games. I guess it's a way marker. Yabon. And I guess that's a separate road diverging into this place. Okay, let's take a look. It's best if we move through town as quickly as possible. I left the wedding party here not too long ago, and it might raise unpleasant questions if I were seen here again. We may need supplies. There's a shop here called the Crossroads where we might be able to pick up a few things. Otherwise, we should be cautious. Okay. Can I click on buildings? Private residence, I'm not sure if anyone is about or not. Private residence, I'm not sure if anyone's about or not. Private residence, private residence. Hmm. Oh, what's this? Shop of some kind. I'm not sure they have the sell. I nearly fucking missed that. Hmm. It's back away. Gonna have to learn the controls of this. This is turning me, and like, you know, I'm not actually moving here. Let's see if I can spot this from a distance. Okay. Ah, that was pretty, uh, hidden pretty well. Okay. Well, uh, we'll go into the shop in a little bit, I guess, before we leave. I guess I can start trying these doors. Gorath pointed to the house. Well, no, in reply to the unasked question. I know it's not Arelda's house. Good enough, Skoroth said. Turning on his heels, he marched to the door and knocked lightly as Owen watched the street. After a few moments, a disheveled-looking man answered the door. They talked for a short while and discovered the man had spent the better part of the night trying to break into a laundry shop that had recently gone out of business. The owner... The, the owner closed up shop and never returned the suit of armor I was having cleaned. If you could get in there, it's all yours. I'm very tired. If you'll excuse me, I'd like to go to sleep now. All right. So, we'll try that. I went and tried the door. The building appears to have been abandoned. They locked up after themselves, he said. Think we should take a shot at opening up? Yes. Okay. So, lock picking. I can try picking it, but I don't guarantee success by any means. The lock looks complicated. Okay, so if we click on a lock pick, will you use it automatically? Do I drag it? I do. The lockmaker knew what he was doing, he said. It's beyond my ability, I can't open it. Do I keep trying? Can I use my key? With a pleasant click, the key turned in the metal lock. Let's take a look at what's inside, Locklear said. With the lock successfully picked, Locklear pushed open the door and entered a small building. Looks like this used to be some sort of laundry shop, but apparently it's gone out of business, he said. Let's take a look around. Okay, we appear to have found better armor. Which makes an interesting sound effect as Locklear picks it up. Yes, that's definitely better. That is definitely sustained heavy damage. I don't think Dude Man here can wear any. 
but I haven't. That might mess with the spells. And this is slightly better than the armor that you're wearing. So we'll have that. Uh, I guess I'll give this to... Well, how about that? Guess we put it on. That might interfere with the spell casting, though. Hmm. I'm gonna operate on the, the, the side of caution here. I do want him to carry that, though. Okay. <laughs> I want him to carry it because I figured... Well, maybe it doesn't matter who carries the shit. I'm used to, like, might and magic. See? Definitely not a good idea. This is my aunt's house. As much as I would enjoy the opportunity to explain while I'm traveling with Amor to hell, I think we should leave. Locklear knocked on the door. For a long moment, he leaned against the door frame as he waited, positioning himself so that he could listen. So he could listen for the sounds of any stirrings inside. When the last was evident, no one was coming. He stepped back with a shrug. Doesn't seem that it was about. Locklear said. Need to give him a snobbish, noble voice. Doesn't seem that it is what it's about. Luck's with us. A bell rang. No sooner had Locklear managed to get the door open than he found the shopkeeper was escorting him inside. Everywhere Locklear looked, polished metal gleamed. As much a temple to war as any temple of Tith, the cramped shop offered a startling variety of weapons and armor. This is the crossroads. I like to buy and sell things. Of course, we're a little bit out of our price range, but we can't afford this whetstone. Keeping the edge of his sword from deteriorating has a limited number of uses. Um, let's go ahead and pick one up. Pick it up. It'll be two sovereigns and six royals, demanded the shopkeeper. Eh, I don't feel like haggling over a whetstone. Whatever. Go ahead and uh, give it a use. I th uh, I think if memory serves, if uh, you try to haggle and you fail, like uh, from the what the instruction manual said, they might actually just refuse you to sell the item to you. I think if I wanted to get his up, how it whatever. There we go. I wanted to work up his percentage values for whatever reason. Wasn't as bad as he thought. Not wishing to make the error of a rash decision, he double-checked the broad surface of anything he missed, but it was in good repair. Okay, I'll leave it alone then. Uh, I think uh, repaired gear, though, might give you better prices. Seems legit, right? So, currently leaving. It looks like it's getting dark. But, uh, we might as well go out and play while it's dark outside, right? What would be the fun in ignoring the... That. I'm pretty sure people do get tired, though. Let's go ahead and save the game. Well, we'll put it on the uh, old reliable there. Oh, yeah, it's getting dark. Hmm. Let's go ahead and play. You know, we'll go out and play so much that uh, we'll rest here on the grass. We don't want to rest in town. That would be rude, right? I learned not to do that from Daggerfall. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know how long people need to sleep in this game. You know, if we end up getting into a combat situation, though, that'd be a great opportunity for us to see combat. Now I'm on the road southwest. Alright. I won't turn on the road-only mode, though, because I'd like to take a look around. What the hell is that? It's a chest. It appears to have a special lock on it. Okay. Rough in its construction and banded with iron, the Morid Hell box would be impossible to open without solving its word line. And judging by the marks on the face of the chest, others had learned that lesson after much difficulty. So, one of the cool things that I read about this game is that uh, you have special chests that are located around uh, the game world, um, which are only openable by answering a riddle. Goros scanned the runes embossed on the Morin Hell clue plate, its text their only hope of opening the difficult word lock. In order to, like, read the riddle, you need to have someone who can read Morin Hell. Goroth can, because that's his language, his primary language. <laughs> this is actually the, uh, the one they provided in the book. How about that? Prince Arutha, from his lofty perch, 
will find our troops without a search. His men will fall, his castle too. And then, what will Prince Arutha do? And there's only uh, so many letter options and possible combinations, it appears. It's not like the entire alphabet. But, uh... So, the one that was provided... This is the one that was provided in the book as an example. And the answer to this one is die. Which you could brute force your way through. The chest thumped. Satisfied the magical locks had released, Owen tipped over, opened the large wooden lid. We found another broadsword. And, uh... Another suit of armor, by the looks of things. Go ahead and give those both to Locklear there. And uh, definitely want to give that to him. Go ahead and put that on. Pass that off to Locklear. We got a lot of junk. Rubbish. We can use the whetstone on that. That puts it up to 82%. Can I use it again? Nope. Okay. Actually, go ahead and try selling things, then. And I guess I can rest in town, you know, whenever I get back. Assuming I get back without a problem. I think it was this way? Hmm. 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 Gorath gone. We need rest, he said, looking for a good place to camp. We go much further without sleep, we might not be able to handle any unexpected surprises on the road. So, that definitely does matter. Alright, that's good. Well, I think it's just a little bit further this way again, asshole. You calm the fuck down, Dark Elf. I'm gonna take your shit. Yes, yes. Listen, I've had enough of your sass. You know what? Fine. We'll rest here. When we get up... Oh, wow. Hmm. There we go. We rested. <laughs> Let's go ahead and sell things. Uh, I'm interested in selling this to you. Three sovereigns and four royals for it? Okay. Mm. Is there anything else? No. No, I think I'm alright. Not exactly stuff I can afford. I don't feel like selling the, uh, the damage crap. Okay. Well, that was a good first day. I suppose. Now we want to go southwest. As it gets brighter. I don't know how much sleep these characters need to be functional. You know, without being weak. We're going to go into like a little sort of thing over here. There might be stuff off the side of the road. Might be a fight. Might be prizes. I like prizes. Hmm. Nothing I can interact with there. Oh, what's that? Oh, someone was calling. Recognizing the lilt of the young voice, Owen turned and looked back down the road. A young squire that he had met at a party of Yaban was trudging behind them, a pack full of scrolls slung over his shoulders. The squire waved congenially, and Owen echoed the motion. What do you think you're doing? You're trying to remain unnoticed? Damn! Luckily, I'm under his breath. Try to behave as normally as possible, since you know him, you handle him, Owen. And remember, Gorath's name is Thorgoth. Owen finished irritated. I'm not a child, you know, Locklear whispered. That remains to be seen. I didn't expect to see you again quite so soon. I would have thought you all the way to Lamut by now. Would have been if the Duchess hadn't insisted in introducing me to all the Duchess. Amelia was the prettiest, I believe, though I think Catherine took quite a liking to you. Oh, excuse me. I'll need to adopt more of a snobbish voice for this, yes. He is squire, Philip, yes. Catherine took a liking to everyone at the party. She's as fickle as her mother. She'd likely marry a... Condoin? If she can find one not tied in the marital knot. True enough. Say, I thought you said you were from Tiburn. Why are you taking this route home? Kind of a long way around, isn't it? Well, yes, but I had to meet up with, uh, my own... My uncle Locklear here, and my other friend here is an elf, Forgov. They decided that it would be nice for me to take a tour with them down to Cro Hox Hollow. Down to Hox Hollow. I hear it's lovely at this time of year. What are you up to? 
You know, I'm looking to cash in a reward, actually. When I was on my way up to Yabon last month, I found a chest in this area, but I couldn't pick the lock on the thing. I figured it wasn't meant to be, and I left off. The thing is, all through the Duchess's party, I couldn't help but think about it. I had chest on the brain. I don't really care what's in it, but I have to pick that lock. Ears down. I guess it's like an, uh... A way to introduce you to, like, dialogue stuff. Inns. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Empty houses. Mm-hmm. Lost items. Okay. So he, he's a way to introduce you to things. Well, that's nice. What's this? Looks like someone lost a chest. The box's lid refused to budge. We shall try to open it indeed. Come on, Locklear. The lock was simple. As the old saying goes, locks are for children and fools, Locklear said. After a few seconds, he flipped the pick locks into the air and caught them again. I am no fool, but I am a child. Ooh, what's this? A shell. Shades of blue and alabaster chased one another around the surface, uh, collected and sold by poor peasants. All right, we have ourselves uh, another suit of leather armor. This one's in pretty good condition here. Actually, go ahead and put that on. And we're carrying around a lot of rubbish. Well, not a lot of rubbish. We, we filled out one character's inventory space. Like how the game automatically turns you. It's like, you can't go in that direction. You're dumb. You're made of dumb. And, oops. Let me go ahead and check the big people map. Lamut is down here off to the side. There's Krondor that way. We'll head towards Krondor. Don't think we'll get there. Uh, before the... Uh, the hours through, though. Now, where does that place us? Alright, we're about to round the bend there. That would take us west. The path turned. Locklear studied the road before them, saw it slithered into the distance like a giant snake before descending, eventually into a large town. Lamut, Gorath said. Do you think we should go in for supplies? Yeah, yeah, sure, why not? Whee! In many ways, the town looked like something created on an alcoholic binge. Rude dwarven shacks smashed up against delicate elven shops, while weird Sorani's taverns grew from oppressive kingdom-style dwellings. A sign outside the city gate, gate had summed it up well. All who visit Lamut are equal, for in Lamut, all is equally queer. We shall enter. We can shop. Just enter. The garrison was impressive. Sitting high on a hill overlooking the mud, the military outposts had been constructed years earlier to head off a possible moored hell assault on the western border of the kingdom. They followed the road that snaked through town and up the rocky hill upon which the garrison sat. After speaking with the sentries at the gate, they were led under the fortress's massive iron. I always had problems with this word. Portcullis. I'll have to look that up later. Captain Belford stood as they entered the room. It's good to see you once again, Locklear, he said, and extending his hand. I share that sentiment. What news have you? How is Earl Kasumi? Locklear asked as the men shook hands. They sat in hard wooden chairs as Belford replied. He's well, but he's off taking care of some business with a few new guards come through the rift from Kelowan. As for the rest of us, we're looking for a group of grey warriors from Kelowan who slipped through the rift just before it closed. Locklear looked a little puzzled. King Liam and Imper Emperor... Ikinder? Ikinder? Granted the Grey Warriors freedom and new status in the kingdom. Yes, but the agreement doesn't allow for the nationalization of stolen goods. Seems they may have absconded with the valuable ruby from Makala's entourage, said Bedford. Makala? The Sarani Great One? Excuse me. Maka Makala? The Sarani Great One? Owen asked. 
Belford smiled. Yes, he has been taking to Prince Arutha about establishing a permanent rift to encourage trade between the kingdom and Kelobon. He's really throwing his weight around trying to get his ruby back. You sure you should happen to come across it? Bring it back here. He's offering a reward. All right, so potential side quest. They thanked him for the information and left. We got an inn there. We have a shop. The Fletcher's post had been constructed with elven sensibilities. Within and without, little of anything had been used in a manner that could be called scurrilous, and certainly nothing was merely decorative. Along the walls, the shop's array of arrows and other archery goods were finely displayed, and each thing seemed precisely in its place. Well, I would very much like to buy and sell, I suppose. All right, you sell shoot things. Those bowstrings are there for fixing items that you... Uh, fixing bows. If the bowstring breaks. Ah, okay. Basically to uh, fix up strings so that you don't have to... Well, that's for crossbow strings. Weed walkers? Hmm. Okay. Helum's dialectic. Uh-huh. A magical scroll. Which might be like a one-shot spell, I reckon. We don't have a means by which we can fix our armaments here. Well, let's go ahead and sell some stuff. And, you know, I figure I'll keep those around. What the hell? And we'll sell the shell, too. Just what the hell, right? 36 minutes in. Go ahead and leave. Now, I would like to get into a combat situation. The hell is that? Let's go ahead and access game options. Save. Save the game. Map. Okay. Big people map. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, they're graves. I don't have a shovel. Apparently you can interact with those by like reading them and you can like dig them up and sometimes you can get prizes and other times you get people who are really pissed off at ooh. Yeah. Probably best if we try to avoid him. Not a chance. They agreed to attack. Going over the plan is really possible, Locklear laid out a simple strategy. We're sent then, he said. Let's just hope our advance is undetected and our advantage or our advantage will be lost. Let's go. The Mordahel to Hell warrior shouted in surprise. Charging in, Locklear tried to estimate what his opponent might try to do and how best to react to each possibility. Though they had gained an advantage by catching him off guard, the outcome of the battle was far from decided. Okay, so first off is Owen's turn. I think that's Locklear, that's Groth, that's our friend here. Alright, I got the combat screen up. Assess or view an enemy opponent is V. Turn on auto combat mode, I don't want to do that just yet. Possible he could be gross and misjudging. Okay. That did use up his turn. Alright. Now we have a thrust and we have a swing. Swinging requires you to get right up next to people. Speed determines how many spaces I can move. One, two, three, four. So, like, say, one, two, three, four, like up to here. And then he thrust at me. And Goroth here is just not that fucking fast. Here's Owen. Uh, can I cast spells at him, even though... Hmm. Hmm. Despair thy eyes. Invitation. Gift of Sung. The hell is a spare thing? Oh. Hmm. It was gonna tell me. Tell me? Tell me? I don't want to choose a target. Tell me. Hmm. Felt like we were having potential there, everyone. Spacebar? Uh, hmm.
I think I, since I selected the spell, uh, I'm committed to it. <laughs> one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So, and then I get thrust at him, I guess. That's rest character. Let's try to cast something, though. I do want to do that. Oh. Alright. Uh. If I. Okay. Okay. Alright. So if I mouse over there, that shows me. <coughs> Alright, let's go ahead and give this a whirl. Blind target for short time. It might be a three on one, but we don't want to take any risks. Alright. Uh, looks like thrusting has the best accuracy. We'll go ahead and take that. Boop. And we'll rush up and thrust him. Boop. It doesn't look like he got a turn. I'm okay with that. Let's boop him. Boop. Damn it. Damn it. You can do this. Yeah! Owen! The battle was won. Search the body. Search the body for supplies, Locklear suggested the amended. But make it quick. If there are any more waiting out there, let's not be here when they return. Okay, so I was concerned about this game being a little obtuse. But, uh, it seems that... I mean, that was just one battle, and it was a three-on-one, so it wasn't exactly fair for the assassin. And we apparently caught him by surprise. And I blinded him. It's like, oh, and here's a deep gnome. The Zvirfnublin. The Zvirfnublin. I, I always have problems with that fucking word, too. Okay. We're off to a great start, then. Fantastic. That deserves a save. Yes. That majestic music. All right, all right, that was cool. I like that. You know what I mean? I do have the quick reference card up, and I did skim over the manual. I would do better on that. It's nice that we spotted him from such a distance. Uh, that I recognize the danger, and that we charged in. And presumably, uh, you know, he was watching the road. Now, as it gets closer to darkness, it's uh, harder to notice people. Uh, let me go ahead and check the map here. Did I, uh... I think I went back up, didn't I? No? Hmm. Don't exactly know where that leads. Let's see if I can find out. Huh. Looks like a cave. A sulfurous stench was in the wind. This must be the Mac Mordain, Kadal, Locklear said, his eyes glazing as he lost himself in thought. I knew that it was somewhere close. As I recall, Mac is dwarven from mine, a cave or something like that. Now, considering the dwarves are no friends of the Mordhell, they might be of some assistance to us, assuming they don't take the exception to Gorath here. Do we investigate or not? Ah, yeah, sure, let's go in. The tunnels were damp. The silver seamed earthen roof which stretched over their heads, was tall enough that they didn't have to crouch. Mm, excuse me. Locklear felt hemmed in by the shaft. He was probably thankful the doors were larger than they were often given credit for in the legends. Okay, I don't know whether using a torch here would uh, have any sort of impact. Map? Okay. Actually, go ahead and click on Owen and uh, take a look at the George. All right, let's go ahead and use it then. Fantastic. Do I need to brandish it? All right, torch is lit. Looks like torches are lighting automatically. Ah, oh, shit. Sparks rocketed down the corridor, slamming Owen flat against the mineshaft walls. Locklear narrowly leapt to cover himself as something skidded across along the rocky floor. Abruptly, the glowing cone of fire winked out of existence as it collided with an unseen wall. After several long hot heartbeats, 
Locklear peeled himself away from the wall, just in time to meet the gaze of a short, tree stump of a man. Bloody awful hammer! You best have a demon in your bones! You've gone to take a whack at killing the beast here, have you not? <laughs> Beastie. Why are you speaking in that absurd accent, Griffith? Beastie, aye. Half a week ago, we heard something fierce a baying in the mine, terrible cord like. Of course, the dwarf knows the sound and see whether he's heard it before or not. Brackner, coast of every whole delver since first dwarf took up hammers. I've never heard of them, and seriously, the, the legends don't speak of you talking in such an absurd accent. No one has in quite a while, laddie. <laughs> Hasn't been a brack nerd in the upper mines for well all along, since it along the Great Lake claimed to the Kingdom of the Isles. We thought we'd laid low to law in, but the Kobolds are staring them up on their quest. Kobolds. Your folk call them gnomes. They used to worship a dragon what lived out here. When a dragon disappeared, they thought the dwarven folk hit him anyway. Every now and again, the later fate here takes a notion on to take a holy quest to find him. This time, they must have woken up a clutch of Bachner. Now the nerve collapsed the main passage and killed 30 of our kin. We have a reward to whomever can do it in. If you're a mind and out of spirit, that is. Brackner. Okay. Sounds exciting. Right. Temples. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Yes. Don't want to spend too much time. So, so we didn't need to use the torch, it seems. You know, if I, if I were, uh, if I were playing this, uh, I guess for realsies, I'd probably load just so I could save the resource. But, you know, I don't care. Hmm. Oh boy. One of these. Let's go this way, then rotate. I think I rotated too far. There we go, let's go this way. This might be the way back. Did I make a wrong turn? I didn't make a wrong turn. No. Hmm. No, I just ended up passing another fucking, uh, thing in the process. Man, I hope traveling in this map mode doesn't get me killed. That would be terrible. Apparently you have to be in the right fucking spot to move. Well, that's not an inconvenient. Yoo-hoo! Anybody here? Don't exactly want to travel too fast. God damn it. There we go. You. Door's too solid. Alright. It's locked? Yeah, sure. Lock looks complicated? Damn it. Key? Ah, shit. I don't suppose we can try to break it, can we? Oh, well. Guess I can't open it, then. I need a key. Well, let's go ahead and turn around. Turn around. Oh, hey. I turned me around automatically as soon as I slammed into the wall. Ah, it's not bad. This game isn't so inconvenient after all. Alright, let's, uh, I guess we'll go back down here now. Whee! Whee! Oh, we do need sleep. Ah, something's watching us. Is it? Be very quiet. Probably best if we try to avoid him. Are you kidding me? What the hell is that? Whatever. Let's go over it. Ah! Ah, damn. Oh, there we go. Let's join in battle. Combat! 
And we can reach him and attack outright. Let's go ahead and assist. We need to team up on people. Let's go ahead and cast a spell. Gonna look for the blindness one again. To spare thy eyes. See if I can despair his eyes. Aha! Kill him! Whee! Oh, so you've made that choice, have you? Swing! Yeah! Despair his eyes! Despair! Yes! Blind you! Swing! Yeah! Alright! Get fucked! Stupid rogues. You're dumb. We don't we're not vol Ooh. Mord Mordhell Lamprey. As a universal weapon, the Mordhell Lamprey was poor. Imperfect balance wedded to the weapon's unwieldy weight made it classically difficult to control in close quarters and challenging for the shorter limbed kingdom soldiers to use. Okay. Racial mod elf. Well, in that case, it sounds like a weapon for you. And we have another suit of armor here. Oh. We'll go ahead and let him carry it then. Let's save after our glorious victory. Although, first, we have more things to pick up. Alright. Now, let's save after a glorious victory. Alright. 2 0 oh in combat. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at things. 10 plus skill, minus 5 plus skill. Hmm. This weapon does more damage with a, uh, a swing, and it has the same accuracy penalty uh, to swinging. Uh, it also does more damage with a thrust, but it's uh, less accurate. Well, let's go ahead and use that with him. It seems fitting. I'll go ahead and uh, keep the broadsword on you, which means I'll try to pass you this broadsword. Great. Go ahead and put that on. Uh, sharpen that up a bit if you can. Fantastic. We're full of junk. Um, maybe we can pass these weapons to him without problem. We sure can. We don't need them. And this armor is technically better than yours. Sweet. I don't think I've had a character who's gotten hit once. I call that a victory for Team Awesome. Let's go ahead and rest. We'll rest until here. Oh, and of course the torch went out. We'll uh, we'll go ahead and use the final use of that. Why not? Whee! Go ahead and explore around now some more. Hmm. Look to my left and right just to make sure. Might have missed something. Might be a chest of some kind. Large room. I don't think it takes any time for me to turn like this. But I could be wrong. Hmm. Chest. All right. Oh. Nearly killed his ass. I don't suppose you can gift a snug yourself, can you? Can we, like... Huh. Well, it couldn't help but it would go a long way to increase the rate at which it healed. Okay, so we need to find a temple for him, then. Because we just nuked him.
Yeah, sure. We got a shovel. Well, we'll take a shovel. And we'll take some money. Totally worth it, right? <laughs> There's a lot of money. Uh, hopefully that can cover the cost of the cure. I just have to find a fucking temple. Things Grimoth maybe should have paid attention to. That's probably not important. Uh, I think that dwarf guy said that something about a temple being down in Zum, or, or maybe down here there might be a temple. Whatever. Nah, uh, let's just go. We'll need to buy torches anyway. If I'm gonna play around here some more, and I, I might. You know, as as tempting as it might be to uh, investigate further the situation, let's uh, let's just leave. Let's see here. Where do we go from this direction? I think it's just straight ahead. Then we go this way. Uh oh. Okay. No, there wasn't. I, I just, I guess I could have asked, I could have asked about temples. Well, goddamn. Yes, I think we should leave. Just a thought. Can I, like, fast travel? No. Alright. We go to Zun. And then I know Hawks Hollow was mentioned as having a temple of some kind. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get Owen here patched up. And, uh, then we'll see about maybe buying some better equipment. Which we could use, uh... To do all sorts of crazy shenanigans. I'm sure. How far down is it? Okay, Zun is pretty fucking close by and it'll be to the west. Okay. Oh boy, we got ambushed. We're in a bad condition right now anyway. Ooh. Accuracy is not as best as I thought it would. I figured, you know, he was kind of an elf of sorts, right? Rest. Oh. 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 It makes sense that we got all completely fucked up by the trap instead of just Owen, instead of just sending him front first. <laughs> Auto combat! That would explain everything. <laughs> Alright. We got to see a death then. Okay, so that's what death looks like. Mm, uh, apparently we all went to do the whole trap thing together. Is there a way that we can... Right. A way that we could potentially disarm things? Well, I guess we didn't sleep yet. Let's go ahead and sleep now. Right, and then the torch went off. Let's go ahead and save the game. There's actually a faster way to do this. B. Saving bookmark? What is book... Okay. So, like, an actual bookmark that I can quickly come back to, like a quick save. Okay. No. So it's trapped. It's death. It's good to know. Let's go ahead and light that final torch again. Well, that gives me an excuse to... Look around the rest of here. And that also explains why, uh... Our Dark Elf couldn't couldn't do much of anything. He was kind of fucking thrashed by the trap, which, uh... Everyone stood next to together. I mean, the same things happened in, like, Might and Magic 7, so... Shouldn't come as a surprise, or really, you know... Other types of first-person role-playing games. We can't send one person to die. 
while everyone else stays intelligently away from the damn shit. Well? This place might be a bit beyond us and who we currently are right now. Okay, let's just go ahead and attack then. Yeah! Alright. Let's go ahead and engage in some fish because he's wearing different colored tights. Let's pretend that we didn't activate any of those traps, everyone. You saw that I tried to play it legit and I got killed. Learn my lesson. Someone's going after him. Okay. We cannot cast a spell by the looks of things. So... We need to focus. Focus fire. Grimith knows how to focus fire. He's played strategy games. Kill the blind guy, who can't fight back! Flank! Yeah! Swing! Oh, fuck. Alright, maybe not swinging everything. I don't want to do that. Let's go ahead and, uh... I keep trying to go for the swing. Oof. And I paid for it there. Uh, fine, thrust. You taught me, game. I have learned from the errors of my ways. I will never endeavor to have nice things again. Ah, can't focus fire. He's too slow. I guess we could just work on him instead. Nah. Damn it. Quit. Quit that. <laughs> oh boy. This hasn't gone as well as I would have liked. All right, so all of his stamina is depleted. That's really that's really drained on his health there. Uh, spare thy eyes. Probably could have cast a healing spell, too. Oh, well. He was almost dead, anyway. They were safe for the moment. We got fucked up. We got fucked up. That's okay. They got fucked up harder. That's how that goes, right? What the hell is that? Dragonstone? Exciting. And we've got too much junk. Ooh. Gilder's Pass Key. Nice. We can definitely make use of that. And food. Share with party. And some quarrels here. Let's go ahead and open you up because you're in inventory. We'll drag that over there. We don't need that. It's rubbish. So is that. All that cheap shit, I guess we could have just sold it after all, huh? Just hoarding it up. Trying to uh, improve my skills doing various things. Oh, well. And the crossbow there. And another sword. And some armor that isn't completely shit. Like that. Great. Okay. We got ourselves a crossbow. Now, there was a fourth guy, which I guess was here. And some money. These. And some of that. Now, using this item here. There we go. Its speed is healing. He kind of fucking needed it. We're pretty fucked up. Him, particularly. Makes sense. I didn't have him wearing any armor. Yeah, let's put some... Oh, we already put some armor on him. Right, because whenever I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you're going to wear armor, we got to make it so that it's not complete shit, right? You deserve that. Wear some fucking armor. Oh, and... 
Maybe he can wear armor without having like a negative impact come across it. And I just didn't know. We'll go on for a bit longer here. A little concerned with just like holding down the uh, the up arrow there. Okay, we can do definitely do that. We'll go ahead and save. Why not? Might be the final save of the entire video. Oh, here we go. We open that up. And what's inside? Hmm. 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 Is it just like a fucking empty room? Hmm. Interesting. Try to interact with the walls there a bit. I don't know if there's like secret passages or how you would potentially activate them. Looks empty. Alright, what if we stand in the center? The rough center. Okay! Well, that was fun. Whee! That takes us back here, right? Zoom out. Straight ahead? South. No, that wasn't another pathway. Okay. North. There's a treasure chest there. Alright, let's try using the... Well, first, let's take a look. Now let's try. Hey! And... Get that paper. Money, money. Sweet. We saw a level up, bitches. How about that? Yes, you did a good job, Locklear. We saw how leveled up works before all is said and done. Fantastic. Maybe we'll get into one more fight. We did see a death screen. That was pretty exciting. I gotta imagine there's more bad people. Hmm. Hmm. Herbal pack, right. That should go to you. Ah, uh, we're still in the day cycle. Oh, one's a little fucked up, but we'll be fine. I think. Hopefully the next combat with Ah, oh, there goes the torch. I like how that slowly died, too. That was a cool effect. And we have all these lit torches over here on the walls that we can't interact with at all. <laughs> That's funny. Ah! Oh, here we go! Ah, dick. <laughs> now I'm not supposed to engage in melee with them. Shoot it! Shoot it! You didn't shoot it! <laughs> I don't know how fast this thing is. Go, Gorev! Oh, God. Blind it! Shoot it! I know it's dark, but for the love of God, shoot it! There we go. Uh, I don't think I want you in on the action. Instead, invitation? No. Health stamina transfer? Probably should. I should probably just... Oh yeah, I can turn on the grid too, I forgot about that. Walk away. You know, this thing is blind. You guys shoot accuracy. Charge! Kill it! Kill it with fire! <laughs> okay, it missed. Are oh, you done? Ah! Ooh! You have 
have to kill it! Ping it! Whatever you have to do! Stop picking on Locklear! I... Yes! We did it! Garof slid the way away from the dead... Uh-oh. Garof slid away from the dead Brachnor. His tongue felt thick and adhesive, a bitter, chalky taste lingering in his mouth and nostrils. He hadn't expected the creature to emit the strange little cloud had died, but he was glad the battle was finally over. Wanting air, Garof turned and nearly stumbled over a small, grinning dwarf. You've done it! I heard the conflagration down the shop, but I had no idea what was happening. Congratulations! Right now, I think we could all could use just a rest. A rest you'll have and you'll be a knight in it. You'll have to have your strength to be carried around all the golden rewards. Well done. The dwarf handed Locklear a pouch of gold coins and disappeared down the damn shaft of the mine. I almost feel as like there was some sort of condition that was passed on to me. Almost seemed like it was like a trap of some kind. Like, oh yeah, you're gonna need all your strength there when I kill you, eh? <laughs> Okay, we ended on a high note. We've had some ups and downs in this one, but uh, I, uh, I, that, I definitely uh, satisfied the hour there that was requested. And uh, ah, I enjoyed this. An interesting little snippet. A look at Betrayal of Krondor. Now this game itself, I'm sure, is quite fucking fast, but... That's a little beyond the scope of this uh, little short video here, which I guess, you know, short is relative, right? <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed yourselves. I did too. I thought that was great. I, uh, I didn't know what to expect coming into it, but the game interface, despite being two decades old, was uh, easy for me to learn. The mechanics of the game seemed... You know, awesome, cool enough. Awesome, cool. Yeah. I, I enjoyed myself. But, uh, I wasn't sure what to expect coming into this. You know, whether I just get frustrated by the controls, but... No. Simple enough to learn. And, uh, something that could definitely have a lot of time put into it. A rich, vibrant world to discover... No, I, I like the combat mechanics there. Those were quite enjoyable. <laughs> so yeah, that's my final verdict. I'm going to be done with this game now. There you go, Liam O'Connor. I hope it was worth it. Uh, take care, everyone. I'll see you all in future Let's Get On With It adventures.